chapters of Geronimo Stilton, The Mummy with No Name. Ah, Petunia. Right at that moment, my cell phone rang. Hello, this is Stilton. Geronimo Stilton, I said. A sweet voice answered on the other end. Hi, G. It's sweet. I immediately blushed. Thank goodness the caller couldn't see me. It was my fascinating friend, Petunia Pretty Paws. She's a TV reporter who has dedicated her life to saving animals in nature. I have had a huge crush on her for the longest time. But whenever I'm around her, I turn into a babbling, blundering fool. I just wanted to check on my favorite niece, Petunia squeaked into the phone. I didn't know what she was talking about. Your niece, I muttered, confused. Just then, Bugsy pulled in my jacket sleeve. Is that Aunt Petunia? She asked. My head was spinning. I couldn't believe it. How could such a beautiful, gentle, sweet mouse like Petunia have such a jumpy, loud, annoying niece like Bugsy? Yes, Bugsy is my niece, Petunia was saying in the phone. And I need you to do me a favor and take good care of her for a week while I'm away. Thanks, G. Bye-bye. I hung up the phone in a daze. Responsible for Bugsy? I wasn't thrilled about that, but I'd do anything for Petunia. Hey, Uncle G, why are you smiling like that? Are you in love with my aunt? Will you marry her? Can I be your flower house? What kind of wedding cake are you going to have? Ooh, I have an idea. I'll call Aunt Petunia and tell her you're in love with her. Bugsy squeaked. I jumped to my paws. No, no, don't call Petunia, I shouted. Bugsy shook her head. Face it, Uncle G, you're one lovesick mouse, she insisted. My head began to pound. I felt like I was going to explode. I am not your uncle. I am not sick, I yelled. Just then the phone rang. It was Petunia Pretty Paws again. G, I want to remind you to treat my niece well, she said. She's such an angel. I shook my head as if in a trance. Then I hung up the phone with a deep sigh. What was it about Petunia that made me all weak in the paws? I caught Bugsy watching me. She had a smirk on her snout as she turned to Benjamin. Do you know that when your uncle talks with my aunt, he really looks goofy? She told my nephew. I pretended not to hear. What else could I do? chapter. Do, do, don't be afraid. Waving goodbye to Aunt Sweet Fur, Benjamin, Bugsy, and I headed up to the Egyptian Mouseum. When we got there, I looked around. How strange. Usually there is a long line to get into the museum, but today there wasn't a rodent in sight. I pulled open the heavy door. It let out a loud made me jump. I don't know why, but something about the empty museum gave me the creeps. In the great hall, we were greeted by an enormous statue of Bastet, the Egyptian goddess with the head of a cat. Cheese niblets. That cat made me shiver. I grabbed Benjamin's and Bugsy's paws. D -d -d don't worry. Everything is okay. D -d don't be afraid, I stammered. Benjamin squeezed my paw. I'm not afraid, Uncle Geronimo, he squeaked. Don't worry about us, Uncle G. We're not afraid of anything, Bugsy yelled at the top of her lungs. Her voice echoed in the deserted museum. Right then, Bugsy realized that she had forgotten her camera in the car. We'll be right back, Uncle G. You wait for us here, she hollered. She grabbed Benjamin's paw and sprinted back outside. I stood alone cold, dusty lobby. Achoo! I sneezed. Did I mention I'm allergic to dust and mold and even rubber flip-flops? But that's another story. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, I was standing alone in the dark, great hall of the museum when I heard a loud bang. I spun around. The velvet rope 
surrounded an ancient stone coffin known as a sarcophagus, had collapsed in a heap. How strange. I went closer to read the plaque in front of the coffin, the mummy with no name. I sniffed the air. What was that disgusting, musty smell? All of a sudden, a real mummy covered in dust and wrapped in yellow bandages emerged from the sarcophagus. I froze. Rat munching rattlesnakes. I am the mummy with no name, the mummy roared. I was so scared I lost my squeak. The mummy with no name shuffled closer. It almost touched my whiskers. Leave before it's too late, it hissed in my ear. Then it stumbled down the dark corridor, leaving a trail of thousand-year-old dust behind it. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't see. A sudden flash of light blinded me. Then a voice shouted, Hey, Uncle G, hope you don't mind my taking your picture. You know, you really should trim your whiskers. They're a mess. Bugsy and Benjamin were back. But had they seen the mummy?